Good morning. I beg God bless you today. Amen. Today is July 10th, 2020. A beautiful Friday morning. My name is Jerome Herrick Weymouth. I am the pastor of the House of Praise Family Church here in Long Beach, California. Today's program is called Take Five. So let's go ahead and begin our lesson today. Amen. But first, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for good things, mighty things, and great things. We thank you, Father God, the entrance of your word gives life. We're thankful, Father God, that you are the light and the life of men. And we're thankful, Father God, that we can learn from your word, learn daily, and be instructed in the ways of righteousness, and to walk, hallelujah, and how to walk, be pleasing of God. <coughs> Excuse me. So we thank you, Father, and we praise you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's lesson is on fear. All right. The dictionary. Dictionary calls fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by a belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. The verb, because the first one I read was a noun. The verb, which we know it describes action, means to be afraid of something or something as likely to be dangerous, to be painful or threatening. Synonyms, which are words that mean the same thing, all right, is anxiety, dismayed. Remember, you read in the Bible, the old King James, be not dismayed, nor be afraid of their faces. It's a dismayed means don't be scared. Amen. Doubt, horror, all right, jitters, suspicion, and unease. Amen. Phrases or idioms, which is our, a phrase that describes a word, means one is afraid of one's own shadow. Bated breath. Make one's blood run cold. That's what fear will do to you. A bundle of nerves. Amen. It comes from being fearful. Break out in a cold sweat. Yes. I like another one here. It says, don't have kittens. In other words, don't be fearful. And you're on pins and needles. Amen. Thank God. We don't have to be fearful. Psalms 46.1 says, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Yes, our refuge is a place to hide out. A place where we can be safe. Amen? And strength. Hallelujah. He is the strength of my life. I will not fear what men can do to me. A very present help in the time of trouble. He's there. Amen. He's going to get you through it. You don't have to worry. You don't have to sweat it. You don't have to be on pins and needles. Amen. You can make it because God is good. The Amplified says, God is our refuge and strength. He's mighty and impenetrable to temptation. He's a very present and well-proved help. Amen. Well-proved. Amen. Many that are Christians, that are believers, have found out that God has proven himself to be faithful when going through situations. A well help. Amen. A well and present help in the time of trouble. Amen. I like what another one translation says. He says, God is our harbor and our strength. Amen. A present help in the time of trouble. I like that. Our harbor. A harbor is a place where the ships come in from the sea where they've been tossed and where they have to deal with the waves and deal with the rain and deal with the storm. But when they come into the harbor, the waters are calm. Hallelujah. They can tie the boat up. Amen. The ship can be uh, tied to the dock. Amen. And they don't have to worry about waves. Amen. We don't have, they don't have to worry about the troubles of sailing the seven seas. All right. You're safe in the harbor. And God is your harbor. You run to the Lord. Don't run away from God with your problems. But run to God with your problems and call upon his name because uh, Isaiah 59 1 says, Behold, the hand of the Lord is not shortened that it cannot save, and neither is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like I said, he is our harbor. He is a safe place to hide. Amen. And ready to help when we need him. Thank you. That's what God is. 
And that's just the introduction. Hallelujah. Let's look at our first point today. Proverbs 1, 33. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Hmm. God's saying, if you listen to me, it's going to be all right. Well, what a deal. Come on, people. Let's start listening. Amen. Listen to what God's saying. He says, if you listen to me, he says, you're going to be all right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here's another one. It says, whoever hearkens. Now, hearkens is an old King James word, meaning to listen. Amen. Whoever listens to me shall dwell securely and in confident trust and shall be quiet without fear or dread of evil. That's it. When you listen to the Lord. Hallelujah. I like this other one here. He says, but to those who pay ten close attention to me will live securely untroubled, amen, by fear of misfortune. Whoever gives ear to me, amen, will take his rest safely. Hallelujah. And whoever listens to me will have security. He will not be afraid. He will be safe. Amen. He'll have no reason to be fearful. Remember, pay attention to God. Listen to him. He's going to get you through it. But you got to follow instructions. All right. He says, you can relax and you can take it easy because he says, you're in good hands. See, the Allstate commercial says, you're in good hands with Allstate. Oh, baloney. Allstate can't fix you up. Amen. Allstate can't heal your body. Allstate can't fix your family. Allstate can't fix this. Allstate can't fix that. But you're in good hands when you're in the hand of the master. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Remember the old song back from the 1970s? Put your hand in the hand of the hand of the master. Amen. Put your hand in his hand. Amen. And he says he will calm the troubled seas. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Number two, from Psalms 91. And he shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste in noonday. We will not be afraid. Hallelujah. He will cover you with his feathers. You ever see a mother hen protect the baby chicks? She puts her wings out and the little chicks run underneath her wings and get close to her body. And then she closes her wings and then she's putting her life on the line. She is protecting them babies. Well, the Lord God says that he will cover you with his feathers. Amen. I couldn't think of a better place to be, amen? It beats being in a fortress. A fortress can be hit with, with missiles. You think, oh, we have an unconquerable fortress. Oh, yeah, they got what they call bust, uh, uh, basement busting bombs where a bomb can go down and they go just explode and go down a little further and then boom, explode in the basement. So, you know what? You can't uh, trust in those things, amen? All right, you can't say my fortress is safe. I'll be all right. No, your fortress ain't safe. Your only true fortress is the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And he says here, we're not going to be afraid of the terror by night. Let's at this. The evil plots and the slander of the wicked that flies by day. And surely it does. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord God is helping us. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I like this when the message Bible says his huge outstretched arms protect you under them you're perfectly safe his arms will fend off all harm amen fear nothing not the wild wolves in the night nor the arrows that fly by day nor disease that prowls through the darkness what is happening here in the world there is a disease that is prowling through the darkness or disaster that erupts at noon. We have seen lately here, there have been uh, protests and riots. So we see these things, but he says, we don't have to be afraid because he's got the last say. He's going to protect us. He's going to make sure that all is well. Let's look at our third one today. Proverbs 3.24. He says, when you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down 
and your sleep shall be sweet. You see that? And when you take your rest, you will have no fear. And on your bed, your sleep shall be sweet to you. You see, the Lord says, don't worry. Now, when I worked at a TBN, I was there for about a little over two years, you know, working on the prayer line. Uh, you know, it seemed like every day somebody called up and said, man, I just can't sleep. I'm so worried. I'm so bummed. I'm so troubled. Well, you know what? The Lord had that scripture right there for them. But I would tell them, when you lie us down, you should not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. I give them the word of God, then I pray over and I rebuke the devil. I pray over the circumstances and pray that God would give them sweet sleep. And he does. Amen. He does yesterday, he does today, and he'll do it forever. Yesterday, today, and forever. He says here, he says, you will have no fear. Hallelujah. He said, you will rest without worry and sleep soundly. Thank you, Lord. Through the night, and you'll enjoy a good night's sleep. Thank you, Lord. Proverbs 29, our fourth one today, Proverbs 29, 25. The fear of the man brings a snare. But whoever learn, leans on, trusts in, and puts his confidence in the Lord will be safe and set on high. You see, the fear of man is a cause of dangers. It is dangerous to be concerned with other, what others think about you. But whoever puts his faith in the Lord will be in a safe place. Amen. You see that? He says to you and I, he says, don't be fearful. Don't worry. Listen to this. He says, the fear of man brings a snare. Of sure, people talking about they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And what's it do? It's a snare. All of a sudden, your foot's caught in the snare and you're dragged up in the air. And there you are, hanging upside down with your foot in a snare. Amen? Vulnerable to what the enemy wants to do for you. But he says, whoever leans on trust in and puts his confidence in the Lord will be safe. So we don't have to be fearful. All right. We know that the fear of human opinions disables, but trusting in God will protect you about that. Well, what are the neighbors going to think? Well, you know, my daddy never was one to be real friendly with the neighbors. So we asked him one day, well, what about the name? What do you think the neighbors are going to say? And he just said, mm, the neighbors. And so, hey, he wouldn't, he didn't care what the neighbors thought or what the neighbors said. Amen. So that's just he. That was just my daddy. He was that way. But some people, you're so afraid that you're going to offend your neighbors. Oh, I don't want to offend the Joneses. I don't want to offend the Ortegas. I don't want to offend the Sanchez family. I don't want to offend the Jackson family. Well, no, don't worry about it. You live for God. Don't worry about it. Don't be worried about their opinion. If they're over there and they're having you for dinner, amen, and they're talking about you all the time, just know one thing. <coughs> Excuse me. Not only are they talking about you, but they're talking about everybody else. All right. And they themselves are going to be scratching their heads, saying, why is everybody talking about us? Because you've been talking about everybody else. So there it is. So don't worry about it. So remember, the fear of human opinion disables, but who cares what the neighbors think? Who cares what the uh, uh, political parties say? Who cares? All right? Who cares? It's, it's uh, God. It, trusting in God will protect you from all that. Let's look at number five. 2 Timothy 1, verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. All right? Now listen to this. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. And some people get scared real easily. Well, no, that fear doesn't come from God. Fear decapitates. Fear disables. Fear makes you scared. Fear puts you in bondage. Fear itself, amen, is not good for you, amen. You don't want to be living in fear. The Amplified Bible says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowards, of craging and cringing and fawning fear. No, he has not given us any of those things. But he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of a calm and well-balanced mind 
discipline and self-control. You see, God's done these things for us. Not the spirit of fear, but the old King James is of love and power and a sound mind. But I like what the other one here says. He's given us a spirit of love and a power and a calm and well-balanced mind and disciplined and self-control. That's it. We learn to be self-controlled. We learn to be disciplined because when we are disciplined, we receive the good things from the Lord. Just like the prophet uh, Isaiah told the people, he said, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat of the good of the land. And so that's a promise from the word of God. Follow God's commandments. Follow God's ordinances. Follow his precepts and you will be blessed. Amen. I like what one preacher said. He was uh, in a hall somewhere and he was uh, telling people about the promises of God. And so he stopped in the middle of his sermon and he said, how many y'all want to be blessed by God? Well, they all put their hands up and they all started waving and shouting. And then he finishes his sentence and says, and goes like this and says, then you better be nice. And there it is. Short, sweet, and easy. You better be nice. And when you are, you can expect the promises and the blessings of God to be fulfilled in your life. All right. Praise God. Amen. For God has not given us a spirit that produces timidity, but a power, love, and self-discipline. So God gives you a spirit for power. God gives you a spirit that you can, that you can go forth, you can move forward, you can do the things that the Lord wants you to do. He never gave you a spirit that would make you turn coward, run and hide, get underneath the stairs, hide in the garage, hide in the cellar. Amen. God didn't give you that spirit. Be afraid of everybody you run across. Amen. I remember a man that was, uh, he was getting more and more paranoid by getting older and older. And he says, that guy at the market, he was looking at me kind of weird. You know, and then he wa said, yeah, he goes somewhere else and said, that lady at Jack in the Box, I don't know why she was staring at me. And, you know, it just, it just got out of hand with him. You see, don't be paranoid. Amen. Just be thanking God that he has got your back. Hallelujah. He says he goes before us, he comes behind us, he hovers over us, and he watches over our feet. Amen. So you know you're covered roundabout. So there you go. All right. Praise God. Let's review. Amen. Our first one, our, our, our introduction was God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. Yes, that is our God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Our second one, he says, God will cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Yes, God, the feathers of God represent the protection of God. The covering, amen. Like the word of God says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. And when it says he will cover you with his feathers, in other words, God's going to cover you and he's going to take care of you and ain't nothing going to come over there and get you. He says, you'll not be afraid of the terror by night or the arrows of lie by day. We know the terror by night at this particular time is the coronavirus. And God says that he is helping us through this thing. And he is making a way for us and keeping us safe. Throw the arrows that fly by day. All that uh, malicious gossip. Amen. We do not have to be afraid of that. And nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness. Nor the destruction that weighs at noonday. So whatever is happening in this nation and this world of ours. God says he's going to protect us. Our third one. He says when you lie down you shall not be afraid. Yea, you will lie down and your sleep shall be sweet. God's telling you, you're going to get a good night's sleep. Just trust in me. Put it in my hands. Let me worry about it. Amen. I don't lose no sleep. I never sleep nor slumber. I don't even blink, God says. So you go ahead and just trust in me and put it in my hands and I'll take care of it for you. There you go. Trust in the Lord. Our third one. I mean, our fourth one here, it says, Proverbs 29, 25, the fear of a man brings snare, but whoever leans on, trust in, and puts his confidence in the Lord is safe and set on high. There you go. You're going to make it each and every day of your life because you put your trust in God. Hallelujah. 
and we don't have to be fearful of men. We don't have to be fearful at all. We don't have to be scared. Amen. Because our God is greater than any human being that may come your way. And finally, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and power and of a sound mind. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you today. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Thank you, Father God, that we don't have to be fearful. We don't have to be in bondage to fear. We know that who you are, you are our God, and you will protect us. You will cover us with your feathers. Amen. You tell us not to be afraid of the things that come our way or what's happening in this land or what's happening in this world. We're thankful that we are safe in you, God, and that we couldn't think of a better way to be. Thank you, God. We don't have to be afraid of nobody. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. Glory to God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Also, I'd like to uh, make an appeal. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we love you. Jesus loves you. And just make an appeal here for help to help us get some uh, gift cards, either from McDonald's or Jack in the Box. They run about $5 a piece. Uh, if you could send us, I know we've had some uh, send us a bunch. We've had others, like one person sent us three, another person sent us five. And so whatever you can do to help us out, uh, you know, it's a real blessing to the homeless people to get a gift card to McDonald's or Jack in the Box because they can just go, they go get to go eat that day. They don't have to go out there and hit nobody up for no spare change. And believe me, uh, that can get uh, to be a drag sometimes and be frustrating because you ask a lot of people and a lot of people that are well off turn their noses off at you and, and tell you get lost and get out of here. You know, I was at a gas station one time and I was uh, uh, when I drove for Diversify, was getting gas and there's a homeless guy coming in there uh, asking for a donation and the owner was there and the owner just slid into him and he said, well, my God, why don't you go somewhere and die and get out of here, quit begging, you know. Uh, attitude like that, it ain't no good. You know, God saw that from heaven. I wouldn't be surprised if that owner of that gas station would end up in a situation like that because the way he was been, all right, and the way he was treating that homeless man. So just remember, amen, that the homeless are, are people too. You don't know. You could be a, a family member. I know my brother was homeless for a long time, but, you know, God helped him and saved him, and he got uh, saved, and then he, he got a job, and then he got married. Amen. And so there you go. He got out of that situation. So, But to be a helping hand and to give someone a gift card, because when you hand the card, they really are sincerely happy. I ain't seen one frown yet, amen. All of them got happy. So if you could send us a, a, a gift card for McDonald's, uh, a couple or some jack-in-the-box. Hey, we even had a lady donate some uh, gift cards to Subway. Wow, that was neat. I mean, you imagine that, getting a Subway gift card. Man, you know that guy or that gal got down that day, amen. So if you could send it to us, send it to us here at the House of Praise Family Church. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. 171 East Platte Street, Long Beach, California, 90805. A big God bless you. And uh, we're going to go ahead. And when we start getting some cards coming in, we'll take pictures and uh, uh, handing them out. And you'll see the joy on a person's face. Amen. And so do something to help your fellow man. Bless them. Amen. And uh, while you can, bless others. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. Jesus loves you. We love you too. All right. Bye-bye.